from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the Radio Talk Show. Hey. Not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Ian sends me a story. And he writes about this. He says, an AP story on child abuse by dumbasses taken in by women looking for a daddy. For a kid they have with some other guy. So I checked out the story. Listen to this. This is from the Associated Press. Six-year-old Oscar Jimenez Jr. was beaten to death in California, then buried under fertilizer and cement. Two-year-old Devin Shackelford was drowned in an Arizona swimming pool. Jaden Cangro, also two, died after being thrown across a room in Utah. In each case, as in many others every year, the alleged or convicted perpetrator had been the boyfriend of the child's mother. Men thrust into father-like roles, which they tragically failed to embrace. Every case is different. Every family is different. Some single mothers bring men into their lives who lovingly help raise children when the biological father is gone for good. Nonetheless, many scholars and frontline caseworkers interviewed by the Associated Press see the abusive boyfriend syndrome as part of a broader trend that deeply worries them. They note that an ever-increasing share of America's children grow up in homes without both biological parents. And, they say, the risk of child abuse is markedly higher in the non-traditional family structures. I'm going to repeat that for all you dumb whores who crank out children without marriage, without a family structure. I want to repeat that because I'm sure you're not listening and possible you don't even understand what I'm saying. Frontline scholars and caseworkers say the risk of child abuse is markedly higher in the non-traditional family structures. That means... getting married to somebody who's not the father of your kid or moving your boyfriend in or boyfriend doesn't move in. He just spends a lot of time with you and your kid. Brad Wilcox, a sociology professor at the University of Virginia, said, this is the dark underbelly of cohabitation. That means living together. Cohabitation has become quite common 
And most people think, what's the harm? The harm is we're increasing a pattern of relationships that's not good for children. The existing data on child abuse in America is patchwork, making it difficult to track national trends with precision. The most recent federal survey on child maltreatment tallies nearly 900,000 abuse incidents reported to state agencies in 2005. But it doesn't delve into how rates of abuse correlate with parents' marital status or the makeup of a child's household. Similarly, data on the roughly 1,500 child abuse fatalities that occur annually in the United States leaves unanswered questions. Many of those deaths result from parental neglect rather than overt physical abuse. Of the 500 or so deaths caused by physical abuse, the federal statistics do not specify how many were caused by a step-parent or unmarried partner of the parent. However, there are many other studies that taken together reinforce the concerns. By the way, these are actual statistics. So those of you who call in and say, I don't believe it, I don't believe you, I know where you got that from, I'm telling you where I got it from, so listen up now and don't call me later and ask me where this came from. I'm telling it to you now, not later. Here are the findings. Children living in households with unrelated adults you got to hear this one. It's outrageous. Children living in households with unrelated adults, that's your boyfriend, sweetheart, are nearly 50 times as likely to die of inflicted injuries as children living with two biological parents. This is according to a study of Missouri abuse reports. Published, where'd you get those numbers? I don't believe you. It was published in the Journal of the American Academy of Pediatrics in 2005. Here's another one. Children living in step families or with single parents are at higher risk of physical or sexual assault than children living with two biological or adoptive parents. According to several studies, co-authored by somebody named David Finkelhor, love that name, director of the University of New Hampshire's Crimes Against Children Research Center. Here's another fact. Girls whose parents divorce are at significantly higher risk of sexual assault, whether they live with their mother or their father. Do do I need to go on here? Seriously. I mean, it just goes on and on. There are a million reasons why this is true. It's just pretty outrageous. And yet you women insist, and you continue to insist on cranking out children without a father around. It's truly outrageous. I mean, frankly, it blows me away. I do not understand why you little sluts, uh, well, of course, because you don't read the paper and these statistics mean nothing to you. I don't understand why you little sluts continue to crank out children If you know things like this, why would you do it? Do you care about the little people you're creating? Do you care what happens to them? Do you? I say you don't. Robin Wilson, a family law professor at Washington and Lee University, said... All the emphasis on family autonomy and privacy shields the families from investigators, so we don't respond until it's too late. She said, I hate the fact that something dangerous for children doesn't get responded to because we're afraid of judging someone's lifestyle. 
Census data leave no doubt that family patterns have changed dramatically in recent decades as cohabitation and single parenthood became common. 30 years ago, nearly 80% of America's children live with both parents. Now only two-thirds of them do. Of all families with children, nearly 29% are now one-parent families, up from 17% in 1977. The net result is a sharp increase in households with a potential for instability and the likelihood that adults and children will reside in them who have no biological tie to each other. Eliana Gill, clinical director for the National Abuse Prevention Group Child Help, said, I've seen many cases of physical and sexual abuse that come up with boyfriends, step-parents. It comes down to the fact they don't have a relationship established with these kids. Their primary interest is really the adult partner, and they may find themselves more irritated when there's a problem with the children. Says here that was the case with Jason Cangro. In t- July 2006, his mother's boyfriend, Philip Guimont, hurled the two-year-old nine feet across a room in Murray, Utah, because he balked at going to bed. The child died from his injuries. And he didn't wake up after that. Jaden's mother, Carly Moore, has undergone therapy since the killing, yet she continues to second-guess herself about her two-year relationship with Kimo. Good. I hope so. There's so much guilt, she said in a telephone interview. I never saw him hit my kids ever, but he was gruff in his manner. There were signs that he wasn't the most pleasant person for kids to be around. Well, lady, if that was true, why did you let him come into your life? You, you're you a mother. You're an idiot. I don't care if this makes you cry. Boo, hoo, hoo. You were responsible for that. Live with it. The story continues. She said, recalling Jason, Jaden's death, it's a hard thing. You go off to work, you say, see you later, and then everything's completely shattered in a split second. Well, hopefully you learned a lesson from this. Probably not. Says here, some women can't see the trouble even when it's right in front of them. Jennifer Harvey of Springfield, Missouri, acknowledged in court last summer that she continued to date a man for two months. After becoming suspicious, get this, 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 this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. By the way, how'd you like to be the father of this kid? Like, let's assume he, father of this kid, cared one way or the other what happened to the kid after he was born. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this story for the third time, and I'm looking at this again. I'm going, oh, my. Jennifer Harvey of Springfield, Missouri, acknowledged in court last summer that she continued to date a man for two months after, after becoming suspicious that he had killed her 18-month-old son, Gavin. I was in denial, said Harvey, who was placed on five years probation for not acting on her suspicions. The boyfriend, Joseph Hazlitt, was sentenced to life in prison for suffocating the toddler with a headlock. There's a real man. (laughs) Come on, honey, your son is dead. I'll comfort you. Here, let's have sex for the next two months. You got to be kidding me. Says here the slaying of toddler Devin Shackelford in 2004 was premeditated. Derek Chappelle, who was sentenced to death this month, considered Devin an obstacle to his on-again, off-again relationship with the boy's mother and simply drowned him in an apartment complex's swimming pool in Mesa, Arizona. The mother, Crystal Frank, has created a website in memory of her son full of reminiscences and snapshots. Chappelle is referred to only as, quote, that inhumane thing. Yeah, he's that inhumane thing you had sex with, dear. The one you said, come on over to my house, meet my son. It was you who did that. I mean, he's a monster, and you're a monster's associate. You're a monster's... uh, 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 You you are helping him do it. What's the word I'm looking for? Assistant, associate, whatever. You were involved. 
whether you like it or not. Says here, such cases trigger a visceral reaction, but the story claims there are no simple solutions. How about you little whores stop cranking out babies until you're sure you are in a nuclear relationship that's going to last more than a year or two? How about that? Wouldn't that be a big step forward, or is it too politically incorrect to suggest that? Now, this story goes on, and I'd love to read you all the details, but you're getting the idea here. We have absolute statistical evidence. We have empirical evidence. We have proof that having a baby out of wedlock and then moving your boyfriend in or marrying your boyfriend who is not the father of the kid makes your kid more likely to be a victim of child abuse or death. Shouldn't that be a good enough reason not to be having babies out of wedlock, you idiots? Tom Likas. Woof. Tom Likas. Woof. Eight hundred. Five. Eight hundred. Tom. 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 Me and my friends made up a little statement. It's like women are like leeches. Either where they go, they suck you dry. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Like this sh- show. At 1-800-5800, Tom Celio. On the Tom Like this show, hello. hello. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, you're just talking about, I guess, us sluts having kids without the fathers around. Correct. <laughs> but then you say um, to not get married, so... I'm just confused about that. Like, no, if you're going to have kids, by the first of all, I don't tell women not to get married. There are benefits to women to get married, and there are benefits to children to get married. And if you want to have a child, you should get married for the benefit of the child and you. Uh, there's no benefit to a man to get married. Yeah, I just feel bad because <clears throat> when you said you sluts, you know, that just really... <clears throat> hurt me because I, I guess I do consider myself as one now just because you said it. And um, I don't know, before... <clears throat> Why are you 23 and having babies? And how old were you when you had a baby? I'm 20. I Yeah, I'm a single mom. and But, you know, the dad and I still get along, but he's, like, out of the picture because I have a boyfriend now, you know. And <clears throat> she's doing good, though. I mean... No one's hitting the baby or anything like that. Well, that you know of, and you don't know that it won't happen, dear, just because it hasn't already happened. Did you hear that story? Does that it all concern you? Yeah, but there's other, like, parents who are, like, together who, like, killed, you know, their little ones. It doesn't matter. This is a a statistic. Children like yours living in households like yours with unrelated adults like your boyfriend are nearly... He's not living with us, though. All right. Well, if he does, your kid is nearly 50 times as likely to die of inflicted injuries as children living with two biological parents. 50 times. Yeah, that's pretty scary. So what do you suggest, like, not to have a boyfriend around just like, I don't know. Nobody nobody should be living with you there, there, dear. Nobody. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's it. You have a problem with what I said? No, no, I, I don't know. I love your show. I don't have any problems with what you're saying. It's pretty funny, you know, like. And why was it necessary for you to have a baby? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I wasn't thinking, you know, like. Well, you you, you know what? Creating another human being, if you're ever going to think about anything, that would be a thing you ought to think about. Yeah, um, but I spoil her, you know, I have a job and she has her dad, we both love her. That's not the point. So what's your... You should not have had a baby. You can't even tell me why you had a baby. (laughs) You're the child's mother and you can't tell me that. Imagine that. 
you just told me you had a baby and you don't know why. Yeah. And I'll give you the answer because you were careless and immature and you didn't care what happened in your life because you already decided you weren't going to amount to much of anything. Yeah. Right? Right. That's why you had a baby. But I, I don't know. I don't... I like being a mom. I love being a mom. I mean, I don't regret having... As I have said many times on this program, when I was 12 years old, I wanted to drive a fire truck. And I knew I'd be good at it, too. Do you think I should have done that? I'm waiting for an answer, dear. No. No. It's a good thing I didn't, right? Right. Even though I knew I'd be good at it. And it would be fun, too. Right? Right. Isn't it a good thing I didn't do what I thought was a good idea? <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Pretty... Because I was too young and immature, right? Right. <clears throat> like you. So what should I do now then? Dear, you did it already. But it was a stupid thing to do. And what you should do now is not ever, ever have a boyfriend or a step father living with that kid you you've now earned your way to living by yourself until the kid is 18 right right well thanks Tom thanks for listening to my problems <clears throat> well problem I'm here to help dear thank you thank you Samantha on the Tom Likas show hello wow that girl didn't even stick up for herself she had, she had no uh, evidence, no uh, ammunition. She had nothing. Yeah, but the men have the same part on this as women do. But men don't have as much blame because men don't make the decision to have babies. Women do. It takes two to tango. No, but, but the fact it. is, if I make you pregnant, you can say this baby will not be born or this baby will be born. Thank I can't. Abortion. Yes, I am. And by the way, if you're not pro-abortion, then you shouldn't be having sex until you're married. See, no, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I'm just saying that you're sitting here talking about how the women have a part in this whole abuse thing. When the it's women, the, the women are the women, women have much more of a part than, than anyone ever said. They, the blames mother. them for. Being the mother, I do think that, but I also think that. I mean, the men are the ones that are actually do cause. The men the wouldn't get the opportunity to do these things if they were not allowed to become boyfriends. I still, I still think that you're sitting here talk, calling women whores and you're right. Women not, but it's the men that are the, doing the abusing. The men, but the, men but the fact is, that. the men wouldn't have a chance to abuse if the women would not date them. These are not rape victims we're talking about, darling. These are women who call these guys boyfriend. Well, I'm sure that when they started dating, the guy's not going to be like, hi, I'm abusive, nice to meet you. There's one woman who said she dated a guy for two months, and she was suspicious that the guy had killed her kid, killed her kid. I'm just, I, I completely, no, I do agree with you on part of it. I'm just saying that instead of sitting here calling a woman a whore, it's not. That is what she is. You know what? No, if you no, are, if you don't believe in abortion, then no. you shouldn't be having sex with everybody who comes along and then say, Ooh, well, I'm religious. Abortion is wrong. If you're religious, you should also not be fornicating. I know. I agree with you on that. I'm just saying some women don't know that the man's going to be like that. They're not aware of the, the fact women that in this saying. story know there's something wrong. I read you the quotes. Right. I no. read you the quotes. That was one. That was one girl that that was. No, there was another one in here too that I read you about. But it's not every. She here's one works. who said, "There's so much guilt. I never saw him hit my kids ever, but he was gruff in his manner, and there were signs that he wasn't the most pleasant person for kids to be around." How many more hints does one need? 
But why? Why are you? Why do you sit here and you bash women when there are there is? Because the men who get into these situations are allowed in by the women. They are invited it's still not in. Okay. It's still not okay for the men. No to one said that. it's okay. But they, they I, would not get the chance to abuse children if women did not date them. I know, but instead of completely focusing on a woman being... I'm focusing on the woman because the woman could prevent this. Not only could the woman prevent it, the woman could prevent it by not having the child in the first place. When you get into a relationship, a relationship with somebody, you're not always aware of all of the things that they're going to, that are going to happen. Again, I mean, again, your- again, if you know these statistics, if you know that a child is 50 times more likely to be abused, if he lives in a household with people he's not related to, wouldn't that be an indicator that you shouldn't have people moving into your home? Well, see, I'm sure some of these women did. That's a yes or a no, dear. Would that be an indicator that you shouldn't let men move into your home? Ever? Uh, Not until the child is grown. So a woman who just had a baby and whose husband left her is now allowed to have a relationship till the kid's 18? She's allowed, but her kid is 50 times more likely to die of injuries inflicted by the guy who moves in than the child who lives in a home with two married or uh, involved parents. I just 50 times more likely to die. How selfish can you be? I'm not selfish. By saying that a woman should, a woman's right to date whoever she chooses and move in any guy she wants supersedes the right of the child to live that's selfish. That is, I, I agree with you. I'm not. I wasn't calling to disagree. I was just calling to make a point. Fifty times more likely to die. Fifty. Yeah, that's bad. Well, thank We're you. Always, we always we always give this lip service, you know. You know, the, we have to worry about the best interests of the child. It's a load of crap. Women don't worry about the best interest of the child. They worry about getting laid and getting their bills paid. Some women, some. Uh, uh, <laughs> the women in these stories, the women who are doing these things. And if you don't believe in abortion, stop having sex until you're married. Stop. Most women who don't believe in abortion also don't believe in birth control. You're idiots. All of you. Idiot. Likus. Tom Likus. So you're just looking for sex? Of course. You must be a new listener. You must be kidding. You think that's what makes people happy? That's what, I'll tell you what, that's what makes men happy. It's the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. The listener sent in a statistic, fascinating, and among other things says that children living in households with unrelated adults like your boyfriend or your husband who's not the father of the kid, the kid's stepfather... 50 times more likely to die of inflicted injuries. 50 times more likely to die than children living with two biological parents. What do you think about that? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Nicole on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hi, Tom. It's Nicole. I just Um, said that. Yes. Last time I spoke to you, I cursed. I'm sorry. I will not do that this time, but I might cry. Thank you. That's okay. So I want to let your listeners know that after 12 years, I am going to be 25 in February. I have let go of a silence that was nearly deadly. I, at seven, learned how to have sex with men (laughs) and was told I was playing and every time I said, Ma, you know, I can't play with my stepbrother. I'm like, this is weird. She's like, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. But I was explicitly telling her I was having sex. And she did not teach me the difference between play and sex. 
and when I was 12. Wait, wait, so your mom didn't or did know? Did She knew. I told her as a child would tell. Um, you know, Steve and I mess with each other's genitals. I'm not sure how graphic I can get, Tom. No, you can't be really graphic, but, <laughs> but the point but I'm making... basically, to- I was a virginal sacrifice to my stepbrother and his friends, and I was than I can say, and I took the abuse also for my stepsister, and then when I needed to get out, because I knew it was life or death, meaning I thought I might have a child when I realized what puberty was, and knew I was going to die if I had the child, so would it. I don't know if there was a fraternity or a brethren, but for seven years, and pretty much started from immediately, I was six and a half, and I... Like, after a week of knowing this man, we were moved in. And I was culture-shocked. I had been an only child for five years because my father didn't want me in the beginning. In fact, left my mom at the hospital while he went to the Playboy Mansion, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. So she didn't pick a real winner, you know. And so then when she finally, uh, I got too sick of it, I told her the worst thing in the world. And women, if you want to get out of something and you're young, you're 12, you're 13, you don't know what to tell your mom. If you're telling her specifically, you, I am doing this with my brother, and you don't know that that is sex, that's wrong, and you say, Mom, I'm going to move with my dad. And that's what I did, and that's how I won, because that's the worst thing in the world she wanted to hear. And when I was 24... So your mom, let me. I just want to get this clear. Your yeah. mom, based on your explanation, understood what was happening yeah. and was okay with it. She did not teach me it was wrong. She did not teach me that playing was sex until I was 20 and thought I was a virgin, gave it up, and my black Pandora box, which I had thrown away since I was 13. And she did leave. When I pressured her, she left. Okay? So, you know, when I admitted it to her the other day, finally, after being afraid for 13, 12 years of death, um, I showed wait, wait, my... wait, 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 wait. We're using pronouns here, and it's obscuring the story. I'm sorry. Uh, you would, you admitted what to who? My, my, okay, my mom. When I was very young, I told her, you know, I'm playing. She told me I was playing with my brother, and I was describing sex. You know this. I at puberty was so wonderfully surprised that I grew hair, <laughs> that I actually covered the scar by never shaving my backside. And until just five days ago, I actually shaved my backside and revealed the scar. And there is, because of all the abuse, a deadline from top to bottom. And she looked at it and said she saw nothing. And that wow. is complete denial. And she is alive today. <laughs> so she knew it then. And then when you revealed this to her, she After still knew years. it but refuses to acknowledge. After 12 years. And I am no longer a victim. I was told by my stepfather, who was not married to my mom, but common law, it was, you know, seven years. Um, I was told by him that if I said anything, because I stepped to him and I said, look, I can't take the abuse from you and my brothers. He's like, well, you can't tell your mom I had anything to do with it. So if you're going to say something, you blame it all on my son. And that's what I did. And I held it for 12 years because I was petrified of dying. And when I realized it wasn't me who was going to die, I let it go. And I actually am a manic depressive because four years ago I tried to tell my story. And because I had been so humble, so nice, didn't have date anyone, obviously, um, my friends didn't believe me, and I was sent to a nut house. And so for four years, I've been struggling with manic depression simply to tell my secret. No joke. So a therapist got you to talk about it? Um, I have been open, you know, with my relationships. In fact, when I first gave it up, the guy did not believe I was a virgin. (laughs) And I had to say, well, I had sex with my brother. And then it wasn't until I came out of a very, um, well, how you cure manic depression is a lot of pharmaceuticals. And so even though I was not a manic depressive, I learned because everyone was telling me I was crazy because they couldn't believe I I felt and was a virginal sacrifice to my brother and his friends that I was I I belonged in that house. I was sick. I was sad. This is not this is not real. But I 
all I told my friends at the time I was in New York. I said, look, listen to this story, and when I'm done, I will show you my scar. And before I was able to get done, I was in a nut house and had not shown my scar. And it's taken me five years of struggling with manic depression and pharmaceuticals to realize I am not sick. I just want to tell the truth. So I've told the truth, and my mom is still in complete denial. And I am no longer in pain, and I am no longer a victim. So to the woman who was on the phone prior to, I am the real story at 25. At 20, a young lady should not realize she is a whore. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. I can read you statistics all day. Nothing says it like that. Lindsay, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lindsay. Wow, that's so sad. <laughs> but that's a perfect example of living in a step family, you know. Um, my story is this really simple that there is men out there who's willing to take women with kids, but you're you're going to be really lucky if you find that type of guy, a really good guy who just wants to be loved and who just wants to, to call someone a family, and you can have kids with that person. And I do, and it's it's great. The relationship is great. And I don't believe in marriage, so there's no marriage. But um, as long as I know who I am and I'm providing for my kids and everything's fine in the family, no physical, verbal abuse, then I think it's okay, but you have to monitor your family. You have to monitor what's going on. Where you do realize, though, that when your kids grow up in a household like that, they're more likely to be alcoholics when they grow up, totally. more likely to be drug abusers, more likely to be gang members, more likely to be criminals. Mm -hmm. They are more likely to engage in all kinds of unhealthy and risky behavior. That's for kids. That's... that's <laughs> That's totally on the parents raising the kids, but it's now, true. Dear, I dear, believe, it. believe me, parents all think they're doing the right thing raising their kids just like you do, whether they're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And we have no way of knowing whether you're one of the ones who's good at it or not. Every parent thinks they're doing the right thing. Exactly. So the fact is that doing what you're doing is extremely risky. And, and yes. frankly, is it worth the risk? You're going to say it is, and I say you put your interests ahead of those no, of no, your no. children. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to say that it it is depending on what you view as a good person. If you're with a good but it's, person. But it's not because, no. because the fact is, I, as I said to you, every parent believes they're doing the right thing. I, I believe every parent should be to be given a license to have kids, and these days these kids need to learn. Well, well there is what it's called a marriage a license, and you refuse to get one. It's constantly, every day. I think as a parent, every day there's some parents who just curse around their kids, who yell, who don't say I love you, who don't go on trips. Who, there's a lot of things parents need to do. You don't have a life anymore when you have kids. It's like, what life? It's all about my kids, my kids, my kids, my kids. How dear, are I have known, I, dear, I've known women like you. Okay, like you. You try to do all the right things, and you think you're doing all the you right try. things. They have alcoholic children, drug-addicted children, mm -hmm. gang members as children. I have seen it close up it's right here in our backyard, right here in Southern California. I have seen this over and over. I see it, too. I have. Uh, but I that, that means it could just as easily be you. And if it does, then I know that. But you know, you just. But have you to understand be... that you have done something that increases the risk of ending up like that. There's a lot of other factors to go along with that. It's not my, you know, they're not. It's not going to happen. No, you don't I... know what's going to happen. You're you're just wrong. You can tell. You can tell. No, you, you can't. Can no, you now you like the last caller's mother. You are in denial. No, I'm not. But the thing yes, is what I you are. To... Listen to me, Tom. What I wanted to say is... I well, we're out of time, but I'm telling you, you're in as much denial as that last woman's mother. The Tom Likas Show.